This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's repair, we're going to be looking at this Toro LX425 lawn tractor. It is in okay shape. Uh, the deck's kind of rough on it, but if that's the only thing that's really bad on it, then we can get that fixed. So I'll show you that in just a second. You might even see it in the video here. But um, I got this on a trade deal, just uh, behind the numbers a little bit. I had that Craftsman LT2000, the one that had the crack in the hood. That had the Kohler 17 and a half horsepower on it. I had that listed. I had a decent amount of interest on it. And this guy was the first real uh, person that was serious in buying it. He had a trade deal. Um, knocked off like $200 off the price of uh, the machine in order to uh, get this one. Um, don't really think it's going to need that much. As an aside, I saw him try to flip it, and uh, he has it, has it or had it listed for six fifty, and literally copied my description in my listing on Marketplace, put it in there, took out a few things, and added a couple of pictures from another listing and a couple from my listing, and it just looked like a knockoff listing. Really weird, but um, I got what I thought is a good end of the deal, and I guess he's trying to flip it and make, it a, make a couple hundred bucks off of it. I don't know. But uh, nonetheless, I've got this machine. Uh, I think it was cutting grass last year. I think it was having issues with like throttle, maybe fuel delivery or something along those lines. And uh, hopefully only a couple other small things and we can get this thing out pretty quickly and get, you know... 500 bucks or so out of it. I do want to put a discharge chute on it and uh, fix the rust hole in the deck, which a lot of these MTD decks seem to have. So I'll give y'all a look around this. We're going to at least attempt to try and start this thing today um, before I head out for um, a weekend away, and then we'll revisit it next week. So we're going to put a battery in it after I give y'all a walk around, and uh, we'll see if I made out pretty decent on this trade deal. Um, I just was... Uh, ready to get that other one gone because of all the hits and stuff that I had and people were lowballing me and you know how all that goes all that mess goes sometimes so let's go ahead and get started on this and see what we can get ourselves into I do want to apologize if I sound a little congested I think I've got some sort of very minor cold from what I can tell or something sinuses or allergy related I'm not completely sure but it has not inhibited me from getting down into the garage thankfully because we're very busy right now this is the lx425 toro this one's made this frame looks like it's from around 2006 or so this is an mtd product we'll see if we can find a um mtd sticker right here one of 2007 is when it was made. This is an LX425. And then there's your MTD model numbers. This is just like that weird crossover a couple years that MTD did with Toro right around 2006 or so. I've got another one out there that uh, is a hydrostatic. I've had maybe for about three years now. Um... I don't know why I haven't gotten it together. It actually had a crack in the block, so that's kind of what kept me. But y'all have seen me successfully put JB Weld on cracks and blocks on these Kohler Courages. So I've got one, uh, got one still sitting here ready for sale. has a few hours on it. This one does not have a crack block, as you can see, so we're good on that. However, it does have a little rust hole in the deck here. It's away from the mounts. This, uh, you can... It's somewhat common on these so uh, we'll just cut out an area right here and get uh, some metal and just re-weld it back I think we've got enough strength down here on the bottom we can just weld it back there 
Um, either I'm going to do that or I'm just going to send it over to my dad's and let him take care of it. One of the two, since he's a little bit well better welder than me. But if that's the biggest thing we've got to do on this machine, then I will be pretty happy. We've got the Color Courage 20 underneath the hood here. The twin cam. This is one of the first couple of years. We're checking the oil. The oil seems to be high. So I don't know if that's... It doesn't... I mean, it smells like oil. It doesn't seem like it's got gas all in it. But we can check the gas tank here. And I charged up the battery on this too, I believe. And I think that the battery may be good on it. We do still have a little bit of gas in here as well. So he said he had to finagle with the throttle a little bit to start it. I am going to see if I can get it started while we're here. I'm going to take this cover off because we won't need that for right now. The ignition coil, he gave me an ignition coil. So I'm wondering if he tried to put an ignition coil on this. There's a spark spark plug in it. It kind of it looks like it's an aftermarket plug. What I'd be interested in seeing if I can get around here because I kind of have everything shoved to the side right now is how the air filter looks. So we've got oh, a little bit of a fuel leak because he used weed eater fuel line there. So probably would be, yeah, probably a good idea to put fuel lines on this. But, so our air filter is probably ready to be replaced because it's got a couple of cracks and stuff in it. What really wasn't put on right. But throttle linkage wise, let's see what we've got here. It may just be that he doesn't have all the chokes on correctly from what I can tell it's just a little bit it was a little bit lazy and coming back but we can manipulate it if we have to here um, what else do we have so oil seems like it's a little high but at least I'm gonna try and run it here for a minute Kind of looks like he just changed the oil in it with the way that filter looks. And this tire's flat. Blades, we'll check the blades real quick and then I'll throw a battery in and see if we, we can get this thing started up. So blade situation is... Actually not too bad, so that's good as well. Blades, let's see if the blades will engage. That belt feels good. If I can get my fingers in the drive belts back here, we'll look at them. Let's look them underneath here in the back. They are pretty cracked from what I can tell. I don't know if there's enough light for y'all to see this or not. Get this battery box out of here. So the front one, the front one actually looks pretty good. The back one looks like it will need to be replaced though. So I'm curious to see how this drives. But all things considered, I'm going to get a battery in this and see if we can get this thing to start up for us next. Guys, I got the oil down to a better level. Put a battery in it too. And so we're going to see, I don't know how many hours are on this or really anything. So I'm going to be interested to see if this thing will power up for us. And if the hour meter works. And let me grab a key. So, let's see. What we got? can't tell. The hour meter's kind of dancing around. It looks like 257. So let's see if we've got enough juice to get her going here. I'm not hearing 
the solenoid clip on the carburetor. So that might be our issue. Let's see if it will start with a little bit of carb spray. solenoids clicking on the carburetor so Whoops. well we'll grab <laughs> that straw just sucked itself in there so um I'm gonna put the carb spray I'm gonna pull this carb out here 10 millimeters I'm gonna see if I can get this uh this over here to y'all so that y'all can see it a little bit better uh, on the other side, but all right, we do know that it starts at least, and starting running, driving, and cutting will get us to the point where this will work. Uh, and you know, I've already been making money back just by getting it running, driving, and cutting. I can honestly sell it as is, but I would love to fix that little spot on the deck, and it'd be a pretty good machine after that. So, we'll get that carb off here in a second. So we're just going to take the carb here and pull it off, or at least pull off that backfire solenoid. I'm going to clamp the fuel line down a little bit further up. We will leak a little bit of gas, but and then we'll grab ten millimeter here. Take these two off. And I think the 8 millimeter is already off, so we don't have to worry about that on the top here. And so we'll pull this out, pull this hose off, and then that exposes our anti-backfire solenoid. So what we're going to do is do a delete. Get ready to do a backfire solenoid delete on one of these things. Looks like this wire is kind of melted anyway so get my straw out looks like somebody's been in here trying to fix this so I'm curious if let me grab my special wrench alright I'm going to grab this real quick just a little special half inch wrench so I can get let's see if he's cut the solenoid off or anything hey look it's a hypocarb ha! I'm not the only one that uses hyper parts how about that um, well we can test this right here right now can't we I think it's a wiring issue these wires are really really gummy right here and so I know that there's something going on with that. So we're going to take and do the anti-backfire solenoid delete on this. It's a hype of carb. It better run, right? So I'll pull that off. I just cut that off and who knows where it went. But I'm going to just put it back in. So somebody's been working on this thing, trying to get it going. But, you know, if you were looking at this and saw the condition of these wires, especially with how soft that is right there, I, my first thinking would be, because it even comes with a wire pigtail. We're just, I mean, these are not, these anti-backfires are just not necessary really so that's why I'm just deleting it essentially off of this machine um, let's see what we've got here we need to pull that out we just need to make sure that this stays pulled out for us while we push this back in it's a little bit difficult because what happens is the gasket behind this little plate here a lot of times gets compromised and then this 
uh, stud here just shoves itself back in there. So, like I say, we're just eliminating that from the equation. And we are going to put this back on. See, we got it on the wrong way, guys. Sorry, got to get it above the little eight millimeter there. And this will be sure to pull this out as far as I can get it. All right, so let's put this back on. This will be a win if we can get this to run today, at least, right? Or have have it running with minimal effort. He did tell me that you had to like feather the throttle or something to get this thing to run, so that's a little weird, but ah. so I'm gonna be struggling with that the whole time trying to put this back on, unfortunately. So hashtag Kohler struggles. Alright, we got that one. We got that one. And we got a couple of impacts. And uh, so, all things considered, we've released everything here. And what we can test now, hopefully, is uh, I really think this thing will fire up. So let me get y'all set up, see if this thing will fire up for us. Also, I don't know if I mentioned, I did lower the oil level some because that oil level was way too high. I didn't want it to be smoking up the whole garage or pulling stuff up the sump and locking anything up. All right, let's try it again. Think it'll run? Hopefully. It'd be nice. It'd be a good end of the week for me. See if I can spray a shot of starting fluid in. Get it going. We'll be disappointed if this doesn't work. Got something else going on with it besides just the carb, unfortunately. I didn't take the bowl off, but I can't get my lips sealed around it to see if the to see if that's going bad. Oh, that's unfortunate. I thought that was gonna be it, y'all. Um, tell you what, let me see if I can let's tap. Let's try a couple of small little things here to start. on that and then we'll spray a little bit of carb spray in here just to see if we can get it to kick off spray it in the supply hole here and one of the jets down here as well so We'll try it one more time, see what happens. I doubt that we're going to have any success. Yeah, but at least, whew, at least we know that it runs. Sounds like it's going to run pretty good. We have a little bit of work to do, unfortunately, but we'll see if we can get this thing running. A little bit better than it is so while we're here might as well since we were already like two-thirds of the way there see what's going on with this thing all right so 
let's pull this out one more time. Just pull this completely out now. Hopefully this line will come off. Oh, we should probably just cut it off, honestly, because we're going to replace it. Uh, but uh, let's get the choke off here and the main throttle off. Okay, so we'll just look at it while we're right here. We might just be able to clean a jet out or something. Or see if something's been messed with down here while we're here. This is going to spew out, hopefully. Oh, it has not. Okay. That's weird. So it wasn't spewing anything out there. How about that? Let me just pop this open. Let's see. Well, now we got fuel flow. How about that? We did not have fuel flow early, just a second ago, so that's interesting. Now we have really good fuel flow. Hopefully not so much that it's going to spill out the top of the carb now, but interesting. So I wonder if that needle and seat were or not the needle and seat, but the uh, just the the float was stuck on it. Well, you don't ever know, right? We didn't know we're getting and the jet looked clear. So you know might as well just try her again, right? I'll put it back on. Y'all saw me put it, put this on earlier. So I'm going to put this on real quick. See if this works. And we'll go from there. Alright y'all, one more time here. We, I mean, I guess the float was stuck. And I couldn't get it unstuck until I did that. So let's see if that made any difference. Um... If not, we'll go, we'll proceed with actually pulling the car and see if this will work. So, all right, hopefully, we got enough juice in this thing.
little bit more longer form clips going on here, but I just wanted to show it y'all in a little bit different way here with the longer stuff. Let's pull it out. Even the headlights work. smoker on the belt. Oh, we just smoked the belt too. Dang it. Oh well. Should have checked to make sure everything was not locked up. And that spindle is. Man. Just cooked the belt, guys. Dang it. Man, I cooked a mess out of that thing. That ain't that big of a deal. We can get a belt. It's only 15 bucks or so. Um, I think I need to put a spindle on this anyways. We may just replace the deck spindle on it. Um, just to give it a nice new spindle belt. But hey, it runs. I should have checked. I should have checked to make sure everything was free before I engaged the blade. So. It runs. <laughs> great that's fantastic and just cook the belt on it but no big deal we'll get a new deck belt and uh we may put a spindle on it as well but uh tell you what not too bad for just a uh, uh maybe 15 minutes or so of troubleshooting to make sure that it worked all right so back now after a weekend away got a couple of items fixed here uh, we've got it running a little bit better, I think. Uh, we've got all, at least got all the covers back on. It still wants to try and surge a little bit, but y'all know these Kohler engines kind of like to do that. Um, I'll show you that. It does drive good. I put some ATF in the front and the rear tire on the left because they did seem like they were using it. losing air a little bit. deciphered that this is a three on the uh, little hour meter. I think it's 357. 
good news is I think it just got service like oil change and stuff, so I ain't gonna worry about that. The biggest thing I've gotta worry about next here is the deck spindle. So I'll pull it in here and we'll cut it off. Go ahead and probably pull the deck out of it. seems to do better one of the things i did replace was this ignition coil so he had put a new one on here but what happened was this is for like i don't know if this is for like a v-twin or something that has a shorter ignition coil wire because it was getting really really stretched and it actually didn't want to run right when i had the cover on it the first time so put the oem coil back on i was told that it sometimes will uh just quit after you run it for a little while, but, you know, I don't know until I can get out and run it myself. We've got to repair the seat still, but what we can do is get this deck off. Now, this isn't the most, one of the common what um, mower decks they put on these. You'll see them, they only did this for a few years, I think, on like the Super Bronco Troy built, and then some of like the mid-grade mowers that mtd sold but you have your quick release deck mount here on one side you gotta line it up so that you can get it out of there same on the other side and then what you do is you slide slide it forward to get it off of that bracket and then your blade engage cable is whoop, right there you gotta unclip that and hook it back in. I'm gonna see if I have a belt that works for this, if I can get the spindle free. I wanna say that I do. So um, I'm gonna try that and maybe we can have this deck going and then if we can get the deck going, then I'll go ahead and fabricate a plate for it, weld it up and this will be a fairly decent rider for somebody, hopefully. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that next. Well, back at this thing, this thing many, many months after I picked this up, sometime in March, I think. Now it's August. And I, the deck, I don't know if I saw or videoed this, but the deck belt broke on it when I initially tried to engage the blades because of the, I think, believe it was this pulley right here was stuck on it. But now all the pulleys are free. I put the belt back on and I just wanted to show you all what this belt looks like or what the routing of it looks like. It's an OEM MTD belt. I wanted to see what the belt looked like. Um, I'll show you all what the belt looked like before I put it back on the machine. Uh, I do need to still fix this. I am going to just verify that the mower drives and cuts and does what it needs to before I go into putting all of, uh, putting a welding job on this thing. Um, but should be good now. Um, need to find a discharge chute for it. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. A Craftsman one I uh, will fit on it. It's a whole lot cheaper than an MTD one. I, I know that much. Um, I might even have one off of another machine I may rob just for this currently so just going to slide it back in again it's only three mounting points here this one right here this one right here after you slide in this piece back into the front here but after you do that you're good to go um so i'm gonna go ahead and take care of that uh and then the spring mounts right here to that hook on the bottom You'll, you'll see a hole for it. And then to the to this bracket, there's a return spring right here, a return spring right there. So uh, this is a little bit more complicated than your run-of-the-mill MTD deck. They didn't really make these for very long. They only made them for a few years. Uh, and then went to a little bit simpler design. Uh, so I'm going to slide this back under here. 
Uh, the battery, I cranked it up this morning for the first time and I couldn't even tell you how long. And uh, it did start with a little bit of starting fluid. It's running, it's surging just a little bit, so I gotta get in the carburetor. But I think after welding and the carburetor, and I think I gotta put a left front tire on it. I think this thing's gonna be ready to go, so I'm hoping by the end of the day today I'll have this thing ready to ready for sale. So let me get this deck back on. We'll test it out before we get into any more um, repairs on this thing. All right, I got everything back on. I'm gonna see if uh, this thing will number one start back for us, and then number two. I'm going to drive it out here and see if it'll cut. Come on. Ah. Let's jump it off. charger while I clean the car. I got one on the charger. I just took off the charger that I could probably put in here for now. Um, make sure all the pulleys are nice and like they're supposed to be and uh, hopefully be good to go uh, after we get this car surging sorted. Alright guys, I'm guessing that the um Guessing just that the jet's a little bit clogged on it, so I'm going to find my fuel line cutter pliers here. Fuel filter doesn't look terrible. And a 10 millimeter. Unplug the anti backfire. This wire is really, these wires are really, really bad. So I'm just going to cut the, cut the anti backfire solenoid while I've got it off. There's one more that you got to take off up top that is 8 millimeter. Like I said, I think we'll be able to save this, this one here. So Pull your breather tube up. Oh, that's convenient. Somebody put a shut off switch on the back side of the air filter. So, 
guess I don't need that, but it's like <laughs> I can't access it very well. Um, and let me get these. Just clamp off. These are really easy to really easy to take off for the most part. Some of the frames you actually gotta take off an exhaust bracket, but and I may have replaced that line right there because that's a fuste line which I've had in the past. But we'll just take off the choke. Boom. Take off the so that was the. This appears to be, there we go, so that, that carb was, or that spring right there wasn't acting correctly. So what we'll do is take this over to the, uh, to my little carb station and just make sure everything's good on the inside of it. And the spring actually might have been the issue there, I'm not completely sure, but, uh, but yeah, so, and at the very least we're going to cut out that, uh, anti-backfire this did have a oh, this is a hypercarb interesting it did have a little fuel shut off thing right there so we'll we'll just give it a good clean and maybe jet the drill the jet out maybe a thousandth and see what we can do i don't remember putting a carb on this but i could have possibly take that out oh the anti-backfire solenoid already cut so let's get this off We've got a little bit of junk in here. The jet is right there. So, it looks all right for the most part. I'm just gonna wipe it out and get a, get a wire and go through there. And if we have to, I can um, take that screw right there and back it out just a tiny bit. So, let me get a wire. I may not even carb clean this. I might just wipe it out. Because it's like right on the edge. It also could be an intake uh, issue as well. Because y'all know the intakes on these don't like to close up like they're supposed to. Get this wire in here. May just do a quick spritz of carb spray. That appears to be in pretty good nick right there. Now this, I actually don't know if it's an air fuel screw or if it's like a secondary jet. So let me grab a screwdriver here. Hopefully this is small enough. If not, I know where I can find one. So this has already been screwed out a little bit here. Almost like I, this has been tried. It is like an air fuel, almost like a secondary jet. I see, I almost see like a little bit, a bit of trash in there though. Maybe not, but I still, I'm just going to spray it out real quick as well. Make sure everything's straight with it. Yeah, everything's good with that too. So, may not necessarily be the carb, but anti backfire solenoid's already been cut off. So, makes me think I was in this doing something at some point, but I honestly could have it on video earlier. <laughs> Of me doing this I am not completely sure but uh, so now I'll just put the let's see so this has got to go back on like this and then I'll put this back on we don't have
don't have to plug in the anti-backfire anymore. Worst case, we just got to jet it out a little bit at some point, but I don't think we will. Let's see. All right. So I'll put it back on the machine. We'll see if it runs a little bit better. Uh, hopefully it does, and uh, we'll be back in business. Well, I got the running issue sorted, I think. I ended up taking a drill and that jet that I showed you, I drilled it out a thousand. Then also that piece, that I, the uh, air fuel adjustment that I showed you, I screwed it out a little bit. And... back on and go ahead and remove the deck again because all that we really have left to do is uh, I got to put two deck guards on it and weld the deck up before testing it out giving it a good giving it a good cleaning all right so I got the deck welded up which is good um, again I am not a master welder by any means but Hopefully I get better every day, you know. Uh, it's nice. The patch is nice and sturdy and secure. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So that's uh, that's the goal. I'll paint over it a little bit. Um, a little bit later. Uh, again, I showed you all that it's running good. Uh, I do need to throw another tire on here, I think. Um, but that's, that's about it, I think. Um, this... This tire isn't quite the right one either. Well, it doesn't have enough spacers and stuff on it right there. So I may see if I can fix that. I think I had an issue getting it off of the nail earlier whenever I tried to work on it. But I'll do all that after I uh, put the mower deck back on. Also, one other thing you see that I did is I put these guards on here um, because this belt would jump off if I did not. Uh, just because of the way that these mower decks are made. So, guards are on. Keeps the belt on a little bit better. Hopefully. And, um... May have to knock this side in a little bit. Because these are for a little bit different style deck. But they're, they'll still work just fine. And, uh, let's see if that's going to be good right there. Yes, and yes, so I just need to knock that in just a little bit potentially, and we should be good. Deck belt is back on, or I don't think I ever took it off. So uh, I'm going to throw this thing on and probably cut a little bit of grass with it just to make sure everything's good. I need to level it as well, but I, I might need to level it. Uh, using this right here. One other thing that I had to do. Whenever you're looking at mower decks, let me get that, get that to a point where I can show it to y'all. Look at where these blades meet each other. You see that? Now they're meeting equally now, but earlier I had one blade a little bit lower than this blade was a little bit lower than that blade. And so what I had to do was take this spindle off for bolts and knock these tabs down just a little bit and that ended up putting it back level. Y'all see me do it on a few other machines here in the garage. Most, mostly John Deere's, but I have had to do a Craftsman and I've had to, had to do a couple MTDs as well. But yeah, so we'll put it back on. Well there it is, all cleaned up, ready to go. Ready for sale actually. Got the deck back on, just cut the backyard with it, did just fine. Put a little bit of shine on it like, I, like I've been doing lately. Things running like a top. The oil's clean, the air filter was new. So it had, 
this thing had just been serviced. Um, Seat-wise, I had to take the seat base off and use some duct tape because the glue had come off of it. That's really the only low point of this machine, uh, which is good. It runs great. The blades work well. Uh, they're a little slow to disengage, but that's very typical of all these MTDs once they get a little bit of age on them. don't work very well but that's good otherwise right so uh, I tell you what this thing turned around in a day which is pretty nice um, ended up uh, saying hey let me get this thing out of the tent this morning out of the back drove it got it started uh, it was a little struggle to start because I hadn't started in probably April May June July about five months or so uh, once I got it started everything was running uh, had cleaned the carb out, mostly jetted out a little bit, um, and adjust that piece on the front some. Uh, most of the uh, work lied with the deck. I had to put the deck belt on and then weld that piece together. And I do want to show you before we finish this how it ended up coming out right there, as you can see. Came out pretty good, especially after I painted it. So there's no more holes and stuff in the deck, which is good. Um, the headlights worked on it. The uh, This tire came back, so I don't really see where it's leaking anymore, which is good. Um, I'll keep an eye on it. Worst case, I have to switch the tire out. But, uh, whatever. Um, I already had the deck guards here, so basically I'm a deck belt in this. And it was blowing fuses after I got finished, but it ended up being that wire that I disconnected for the anti-backfire actually melted itself to the muffler and was creating a dead short. So after I cut that out, that issue got resolved. And so um, put a good battery in it uh, and it's ready to go. So um, hopefully I can get, um, yeah, so hopefully I can get about 600 bucks for this thing. Uh, I can't remember what I got it what I paid on trade for it. I think I gave them $250 off because of that. At the time it was a running and driving machine and it needed just a little bit of work. And really, with the amount of work I've put in this and you know, about probably $30 worth of parts if I were to guess with the deck belt, I, had, I did swap the blades out uh, for some different blades. But um, give or take about 30 bucks, including the battery. Um, since I use a used battery, then it should be good, uh, ready to go for a new owner. I really do appreciate y'all watching this video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed putting this thing back together. It's been sitting back here since March, since I got it on trade, uh, for one of the Craftsman LT2000s. And so, um, it's nice to get it back going again and go ahead and make some money, hopefully here late in the season, uh, mid-August mower should still sell it may not quite sell quite as much as they would in April and May but I should get 550 out of this easily um, it's got it's resale red um, and everything's good on it it runs good drives good cuts good um, just the blades are a little bit slow to disengage and uh, seats a little rough but that's about it um, can't really ask for much more out of a rider that's around five to six hundred dollars right so i do appreciate y'all watching hopefully y'all enjoyed this video on this mtd in disguise as a toro the lx 425 i have an lx i think 475 back there uh that i've had for years but it has a cracked block that i need to sort out um potentially just swap the engine on 
I have the deck for it and I have everything else I need to put it back together. I just, you know, got about 35 other mowers. But thanks again, y'all, for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next video.